Yo, yo, yo. What's up, Raider Nation? Welcome in. Thanks for joining me. Get on in here. First of all, thanks for your support. We need you to continue. Uh, like, share, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Also, on the podcast, when you go to your Apple podcast, for sure, Apple, this is how I have Apple, so I know. You go and hit that that little uh, like banner-looking button that says follow the show, and then it will automatically download the show. You won't have to physically go download every show that we put out and it'd be much appreciated. So it's a little like banner looking thing, like a ribbon on the, uh, when you click the little three dots up there, hit that. That'll have you follow the show. And thanks. We really appreciate it. The, the numbers are looking good. We appreciate all, all of the support. We really do. All right. So now I have did last time I, talk to you guys I was saying that they was going to hire AP on what Thursday it was Thursday the 19th so that's when it happened they hired AP that afternoon probably about one in the afternoon right around that time or so. So I was right, but then I was only half right because it doesn't seem that they have hired Champ yet. So everybody's like, what about Champ? But hold on, we're going to get to that. So I was right about the AP hiring. So now that we got AP, what are uh, our feelings on that? Well, I think that we will – so I think we did an awesome job getting them, getting them in. Didn't want to delay it too much. So the questions now come in. Number one question, what's up with Patrick Graham? Oh, no. He's, from from what I've been hearing, he's got some head coaching opportunities, perhaps. And maybe even, I, I guess you would say parallel opportunities with more money, perhaps, attached. But the feeling is he'll be back, that Patrick Graham will be back. So, you know, some of those guys, the coaching staff, you know, you got to have a DB coach, you got to have D-line coach, you got to have backer coach. That was AP, actually. So they're going to need a linebacker coach for sure. Um. And then you got to have a decor. So some of those guys might have came under different circumstances with the uh, Joshua now. I don't want to get up out of there. So there's going to be minimal replacements for Graham. Graham stays on. Defensive staff be pretty much intact, I think. They they might have to come with two, two new guys, the linebacker coach and perhaps another position. Now, the other questions remain with AP are big ones. So, first, I've come to the understanding that he's going to have to lean on uh, his mentors, Marvin Lewis and, and uh, Tom Coughlin. I believe Marv will even have some type of title with the team, advisor, something of that nature. Uh, 
Tom Coughlin, not in an official capacity, but he will be a part of AP's day-to-day -day sort of, you know, he – when when he when AP reached out to him before, it was just kind of like how to structure the day to day as an NFL head football coach. Like, what should I be doing at any given hour? Because hell, I mean, you know, man, he didn't know. He don't know that shit. So I feel like it was good looking of him. It was smart of him, resourceful of him to understand where where he had shortcomings and to go and get some pretty good guys to help him out with that. Some guys that have been to the very top in the, in the game. Guys that have uh, multiple playoff victories. So, and fairly modern guys. They haven't coached in a while, but it's, it, it hasn't been that long. But they still kind of know and they've been around the game. So that part's going to be good. He's going to, you know, figure out how to just be a head football coach. What to do day to day, uh, how you should be running your meetings, what you need to see from your coordinators, uh, dealing with ownership, dealing with the media, even though AP is a little savvy with the media because he had already started kind of with a media career right when he finished playing for the New York Giants. He went right into the ESPN and that sort of thing. So he's got all types of training as far as that goes. Could never underestimate that. Before he even went into coaching, he had media training. So the other question, his OC, his offensive coordinator, this is the part that he really has to nail. Because as all the nation knows, like we spoke on before when I started started off this morning. The defense was lights out. We had a guy or two there to add depth and to perhaps add a little bit more uh, dynamic pass rush and just front, period. Run front, uh, front seven. Period. Uh, some guys can be added, but the D was pretty tough, man. That defense, with the way they held people out of the end zone in the last, let's just say, seven, eight ball games, just the whole time AP was the coach, nobody was scoring a bunch of points. It wasn't a bunch of points being scored. Kansas City only had 14 against against the Raiders. Um, Indy put up 23. And, uh, you know, they got the re-kick on the field goal. So we weren't giving up a bunch of points. And the points that they were getting were tough to come by. It wasn't just like easy stuff, guys running wide open, things of that nature. So a few upgrades, tweaks, the defense should be as good or better. The problem is on offense. That's why the OC, besides the QB position, which we're going to talk about in a few ticks, the most important hire besides AP getting hired is who he's going to let run that offense, man. What type of offense are the Raiders going to run? What direction are they going to go in? Now, what makes it tough? If you don't, what makes it tough is you don't have your number one QB in house already. You have ideas about who you would like to be the QB. You know that you have Aiden O'Connell, who is a decent. Uh, quarterback he's not a bum but today's uh nfl we think we're going to require a little bit more movement a little bit more mobility 
some functional mobility, as I've heard guys say. Shout out to my boy Mo. Functional mobility is what we need, and Elcano really doesn't do that. He he'll hold the ball, hold the ball, and then kind of just tuck and take the sack. We can't have that. We got to have guys climbing the pocket, escaping the pocket, making plays off schedule. All right. So, with that said. The difficulty in this hiring of the OC, the trickiness is you don't know who the quarterback is going to be, the full-time QB. So the style of offense, the or offensive coordinator, the very thing that separates offensive coordinators is their their styles or their play, their uh playbook their scheme, if you would, the way that they attack defenses is big on which way you're going to go and which quarterback you're going to have. You got you to gotta meld the two together, right? The best teams meld the skill set of the QB with the offense. As we sit right here in late January, nobody has a clue who the quarterback is going to be for the Raiders. I mean, besides Aiden, right? Let's say we're not going to go with Aiden. We're going with somebody else. Who's that going to be? What are you going to They got moves uh, planned to get up and get one of the quarterbacks that's in the drive. There may be four to five uh, quarterback prospects in the draft with four to five teams ahead of us that need quarterbacks and in the field situation. So Chicago may feel like they need a quarterback, but then they got Justin Fields. What are they going to do with him? Are they going to have Justin Fields sit there and back up the new guy or him compete with the new guy? I doubt that. I think they would trade it, right? I've talked about how I feel about Justin Fields. I feel like Justin Fields with this offense, with these guys that we have, and I'm including Josh Jacobs and Zeus, Devontae, uh, Michael Mayer, Jacoby, um, the current offensive line as it is constructed. Justin Fields will put a lot of pressure on defenses. That's how I feel. It'll be Raiders will be a tough out. Wouldn't be a lot of three and outs. You would definitely have to have somebody accountable for him, which takes a defender out of the uh, back end. And then if you're blitzing, blitzing is always a risk. He did, he could escape out of there, or we could have the right play call or the blitz. He just puts way more pressure, makes the offense way more dynamic. Uh, Raiders instantly become way tougher to beat with him as he improves as a passer. Not like I'm saying – he can regress as a passer. He can only improve as a passer. And then what he brings to the table with his legs is unquestioned. Um, no doubt uh, a dynamic that would go well here in Vegas and propel the Raiders up until, I say, the upper echelons of the National Football League, a perennial playoff type of situations with the way the defense play and a few bounces of the ball, uh, NFL stand out of our business. Stop hating on us. The renaissance is here, I say, with Fields. But uh, whoever the QB is going to be, right, you got to tailor. That OC has to tailor the offense. So let's say you're going to bring in a, a Cliff Kingsbury, right? We know what Cliff is on pretty much. The, the air raid. sort of system from uh old uh, Mike Leach, rest in peace. There's a form of that, that old Texas Tech, very passy oriented, very shotgun oriented, not run heavy at all. AP, as you remember, so, as soon as he got the interim tag, one of the things he said was, we're a running team. You guys remember that? So, way AP likes to coach, he wants to run the football. He wants his team to be able to run the football. So 
We've been hearing a lot of this Cliff Kingsbury, but that might just be smoke and mirrors, and we might be thinking about something else going a different way. Um, the one guy from uh, the Seattle Seahawks, uh, Wharton, I think his name is Waldron, he got a job today. I just saw the reports. Uh, it's on my phone. He just got a report today. I mean, a job today. So, uh, the Cliff Kingsbury situation, the move for Cliff Kingsbury could still be there. That could still be a possibility, but the run game is what sort of complicates things for me. I I'm thinking that. That would be an issue with Kingsbury's offense. Then, also, if we went with Cliff, I feel like that's saying a certain type of QB is going to be selected. What I mean is a, a dynamic, uh, true, true uh, dual threat with mobility. Slightly more than functional mobility type of QB that brings a dynamic element to the offense. It could be a couple of the young guys in the draft. They could be thinking Caleb, which I don't know how they get up to get him. They could be thinking uh, the Heisman winner, Jordan. AP already knows him, has a relationship with him. He, he started his career at Arizona State. Won the Heisman this past year at LSU. Um, they could be thinking him. They could be thinking the, the Bo Nix kid in Oregon. They could be thinking, we don't know. Um, that is going, the, what I do know, the offensive coordinator job and the quarterback should be tied into each other. I mean, let's face it. We can't just grab any OC and then fit any old QB into the system. So if they're going to get an OC, they're going to get an offensive coordinator. If the Raiders are going to get an offensive coordinator within, let's say, right – right in here uh, before the Super Bowl. Then I would say that OC will come in with both the vision for the offense and for the quarterback and challenging the front office to complete the plan to get said quarterback, right? Whether that be free agency, whether that be in the draft, whatever position in the draft it is, you come in, you say, hey, this is the Q, the, the O I would like to run. These are the two or three QBs that I feel we could run it with. And, and then you let, I'll say, you know, you give them the order in which, boom, boom, boom. I want, I would take this guy first, this guy second, this guy third, but it had to be one of these three guys. All right. And then you let the, the front office figure out how to get the guy. Right, so you can do it like that. You go handle the also offensive coordinator hiring pre-draft. What you got to? You can't just be not having no OC all the way till April. I mean, let's come on, let's be honest. That's football league. Um, that's how you come in. You tell Mark and whoever you're going to be interviewing with, because we're going to get to the old the GM job right here next. You say, yeah, this is the O that I want to run. Bam, you slam it in, down on them like a domino. Bam, that's, right. that's the O I want to run. This is guy number one, guy number two, guy number three. That's simple, man. So glad we got AP. I feel like we did the right thing. I feel like we're going to continue off of last year's whole vibe. I feel like he'll be a good coach. 
don't need to be an X's and O guy. I feel like that's a trend that needs to stop. I'm tired of seeing the head coach over there with the big clipboard. I mean, you know, the big play sheet looking down, calling plays. Man, coach the team. Let the coordinators do that. But I think it becomes an ego thing with some of these guys because Coach Reed does it in KC. He didn't want a Super Bowl, right? So now if you're not doing that, they, does that diminish your bowl, your Super Bowl? They're going to be like, you know, you really didn't. It was your coordinators more so. What's the What's the big deal? We're all on a team. We're supposed to be here to win. I felt like that was Joshua's problem. I even felt like that was JG problem. John Gruden. John Gruden need to give needed to give up that play sheet in his second stint as the Raiders coach. But somebody else called plays, man. Coach the team, offense, defense, and special teams. Coach everybody. Have a little bit to say about all of that and the standard that you want to see out there. And then let your coaches worry about getting the team there. Too many guys want to be gurus. They want to be called gurus. They want to be called the next this and that. Coach the team, man. All you guys over here with your play sheets. And I know you follow from burners. But the trend in the NFL should be the non-guru guy. The non-play sheet guy. The leader of men. You go out and get the play sheet, dude. You know what I mean? Leader of men is what you need at all levels. I think AP proved that. It's not just like Pop Warner High School where you need leaders of men. You need that at the college and pro level. So glad we got him. OC hire is going to be important. We'll stay tuned on that. Congratulations, AP. We with you, bro. Um. This is a results-oriented business, man, so you already know. The way things go in the United States, you got to be twice as good. So we're looking forward to next season with you, brother. So, all right. That's it for that. We're going to segue into a different segment, segment number two. Remember, guys, like, share, subscribe, follow the show. Like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Comment over there on YouTube, too. Well, we answer the comments every day. So you got comments on what I say here or, or, or any of the other videos. You'd be like, if you like Ragu, you Mickey. Man, it's all good, bro. Come, come over there and tell me. Comment over there. Be like, man, that ain't true. Whatever you're talking about, you don't know what you're talking about, home boy. Whatever you want to say. We love for the comments over on the YouTube channel. As far as the podcast, when you when you get it, Hit the little flag button, the little ribbon on the, the three dot symbol. Follow the show. It'll be automatic download. That's all we need. All right. So now, what about champ? That's all people been hitting me up with. Like, you said both. The GM and the coach was going to be hired. All right. I, I did. So I was half right. I'll take the half. But I really was right, and I'm going to tell you how. Reports said Champ has been in the coach's interviews. So remember, Mark, Mark satisfied the Rooney rule by hiring two minority candidates outside the building. Also, on in those meetings, you had Champ Kelly. What people aren't realizing is, why would you be in the coaching interviews if you're not the GM or if you're not going to be around? Let's just say it like that, if you're not going to be around, because the, the title could actually be different, right? His title that he ends up having could be different than what it is. 
he was he was the assistant GM. Everybody assumed title was gonna be uh, general manager. It could be different. Now, that's my question. Why are you even in on the interviews? Now we know. Yeah, he hired AP. Perhaps was gonna hire AP the whole time. The interviews were walkthroughs, right? Formality type situation, right? That's what I'm saying. Still, why is this guy in there though? If he's not gonna be around, right? He had virtual interviews. If he was really taking all of that serious, I don't think Mark is letting him on interviews if he's not already thinking about giving him a job. But he's not gonna hate on Champ and tell him not to interview anywhere. Right? He wants the best for all his people. But why would Champ be in on the higher coaching interviews? He even sat on the interview with AP if he wasn't going to at least be around. Just think about that. Now, from what I've been hearing, it's Ed Dodds. Right before, right before I started the podcast, today I got the word about Telesco getting a second interview so that's the Chargers GM that got ran he's been around for a while with the Chargers I think they said for 11 seasons he got ran but he's getting a second interview with us and there was Dodds Dodds was the guy in Indy, been around, long, been around a long time, had ties to Jim Harbaugh. Everybody was, you know, that first little wave of rumors was saying anywhere Dodds goes is where Harbaugh is going to go. So you might be like, right, good. Why is Mark still interviewing guys if Champ's got the job, like you said? Well, what I've been hearing is Mark wants to have a double layer of football operations, of, of reporting, if you will. He wants a guy in between him and the GM, right? He wants to step out, out of it totally. He just wants to sign checks. So, Sandra, Douglas Morgan, she's not a football person, the president, but she's the president of the team. That's a lot of business stuff that goes on. And then, you know, financially, she'll run stuff up to Mark. But she's not on the football side of it. So that really just leaves Champ and then his staff. Right. But from what I understand, what I'm understanding is Mark would like two frontline football guys, kind of like Ziegler and Champ. Right. Even though we know Ziegler was was attached to Joshua. And we got to admit, man, that Ziegler brought in some decent players, man. Trey Tucker, um, Thayer Mumford. Dylan Parham. Uh, Tyree Wilson, who started showing, you know, some flashes. Also, they brought over Spillane. They didn't draft him, but they brought, they got him. And he ended up leading the team in tackles and going to the Pro Bowl. So, Mark, wants like a two-headed monster right there. He either, you know, I don't know how they're going to structure the naming of it, general manager and football ops guy, VP, football ops or uh, assistant GM, GM and assistant GM. Uh, we just don't know. The player personnel, president, director, and GM, right? There's ways to structure it. 
from what I that's what I'm hearing. Mark wants two guys. The reason Telesco's getting a second interview is the dynamic, the way it's been working out is Mark wanted to give Champ this job last two years ago. He ended up going with Ziegler because Joshua said he wouldn't come without Ziegler. So he asked Champ to stay on as the assistant GM at a good salary. Champ agreed. So this time Champ wants to be in the lead. And he's going to be in the lead. Dodds. And this is just what I've been hearing, but I'm plugged in. Remember, they follow from burners. Dodds was reluctant to be in a secondary role. He wants to be the guy. Well, Mark wants Champ to be the guy. And somebody to work with Champ, but Champ's the guy. So... Why? I'm, you know, I'm reluctant to put a time frame on it because I don't know what the other candidates' schedules are like. But I say by the Super Bowl, look to for Mark to have his two guys. So I'm not saying he's announcing Kelly because Kelly's already going to be a part of the staff. What he's going to do is announce Champ Kelly's new title. Because it's got to be new, even if he's the GM. If there's the GM, he was assistant GM or interim GM. So he's going to be the GM or he's going to be the uh, player personnel or football ops or something like that. And then announce the GM too. Right? So if it goes well with Telesco, because Telesco has brought in some talent as well. I had a discussion with that. I saw some on, on X about the guys he's brought in and – uh about him bringing in good ingredients to the kitchen, but the, the cook didn't cook it up right. Uh, Staley, Brandon Staley. So, Telesco's decent eye for talent. Dot, decent eye for talent. On another show, we talked about the guys that he brought in in, in Indy. Champ is champ. He brought us guys like Jack Jones uh, and the two D tackles that end up coming in off the street when he, he really had limited uh, – resources, limited opportunities because he got the job after the trade deadline. Couldn't really do anything. Could only bring in guys off the street. Uh, so Champ has done a good job. The roster uh, was structured well. We just said that Ziegler brought in good guys. Champ was part of that. It was just all Ziegler. It was Champ as well. He was assistant GM. So Telesco, Champ would be a good team. And if they end up going with somebody else, I'm sure it's going to be a good team with Champ at the league. But that's the hold up from what I'm hearing. Champ is going to be in the league, and Mark wants two guys. All right, so it's not like you see these guys interviewing for Champ's job. They're interviewing for that second position. Okay, so the absence of evidence of something is not the evidence of absence. Something happened. So keep the faith, nation. That will be announced. Champ will be kept on board. And we will be getting this thing going right. You know, as soon after the Super Bowl, you know, the time frame. Free agency begins right away. We sign guys, re-sign guys, that type of thing. But everybody will be in place by then. The two-pronged position at the um, GM football ops position. And also the uh, head coach, probably the, the OC, will know about Graham. All that will be settled here. Another two weeks. Three. Okay, so AP and his staff. Champ, what about Champ? Covered that. Talk a little playoff, and then I'm not going to hold you guys. So I nailed everything, right? All my picks. I said the home teams was going to win. 
obviously down Mahomes and those Chiefs still uh still playing. So on the NFC side, we have the 49ers hosting the Detroit Lions. On, over on the other podcast, way in September, might even have been August, I predicted the Niners were going to win the Super Bowl this year. So that was my prediction. I'm going to stick with that. I'm also going to say if Purdy played like he did against Green Bay, uh, Detroit's going to the Super Bowl, first time ever. Which would be, you know, even though I picked Niners, I wouldn't be mad at Detroit making his first Super Bowl appearance. Those fans deserve it. But I'm going to San Francisco. Man. By less than a field goal. The other side, you guys know I'm known as a Lamar Stan account at times. Big Lamar guy. Would love to see Lamar get it done. And I'm going to say Lamar gets it done. Lamar in that defense against the the faunted Chiefs, the world champion Kansas City Chiefs, playing well, too. Say in a dogfight, the de facto Super Bowl, AFC Championship, no disrespect to the Niners or Detroit. Baltimore, man. Lamar. They're going to the Super Bowl. Ravens. Niners. And we saw that a few weeks ago here. But we're not even going to get into the Super Bowl prediction. Ravens, Ravens, Niners this weekend, championship weekend. The best Sunday. In the NFL, it's better than Super Bowl. It's like two Super Bowls in one. That conference championship. Always been my favorite day. Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go with the home teams. Surprise, surprise, right? Got to stick with Niners because I picked them. Even though I feel it trending a little bit towards Detroit. We're going Niners and then we're going to go Ravens. The first game, I believe, is the Ravens and KC. And then the Niners punch their ticket later. So Ravens and KC in the Super Bowl, and then we'll pick that when it comes. Pause. So that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I ain't going to hold you. Uh, just win, baby. Go Raiders. And peace. <laughs>